Hello there, Rabbites. It's me, Rab, um, and I'm here today to hopefully talk you through a couple of cool and interesting com uh, concepts. We're going to look at inheritance. We're going to look at abstract classes. We're going to look at abstract methods. We're going to look at array lists. Loads and loads of cool stuff. Um, but without any further ado, let's just jump right in, um, cut all of the crap. So first of all, inside of our Oh yeah, I might as well explain the directories first. So we've got one directory, or a package, containing animal and dog. Animal being the superclass, dog being the child class that extends animal. And then we've also got our application, which is where we're going to be running main, and we're going to be um, like testing and running our application. So let's start with animal. So this is our superclass. As you can see, I've already uh, created the class, and we've got this public abstract class animal. Public, you probably already know, it means it's accessible from anywhere. Class, you probably already know because we're just defining it as a class. Um, but then this abstract keyword. So what this means is we cannot instantiate animal itself. We can only instantiate children of this super class, right? I'll explain a little bit more later after we've made a couple of interesting things. We're also going to make a protected string of name, okay? protected or the protected uh, visibility type inside of Java, what this means is we can only directly access this variable from uh, children of the superclass or other classes within the same package. This is going to make a little bit more sense when I give an example inside of application a little bit later on and an example from inside of dog. But for now, we're just going to um, accept that protected basically means we can't access it from everywhere. We'll get to it. So let's make a constructor method. So we have public animal, which means we can access this from anywhere. And we're going to pass in a string of name. Oh, <laughs> that was a silly mistake. And then inside of here, we say this dot name is equal to name. OK, so that just means we're assigning the name from inside of animal to name. Very simple stuff. And while we're here, we're going to create an abstract method. OK, so we can define this as public abstract um, wave at user uh, void, which means it's a void return. It's not returning anything. Uh, wave at user. OK, lovely. So we've got this animal class. It's all ready to go, right? Now, I'm just going to explain quickly what this uh, function here is, uh, method here is doing. So public abstract void wave at user, you may notice that there is absolutely no like curly braces or any information inside of this. That's because we're not actually defining the method here. All we're saying is any time that a child extends animal, it has to overwrite this method. It has to, it doesn't have a choice. This is basically has to be used by every single class and it's going to be different in every single one. So let's just say wave at user um, for dog was he waves his paw, for example, and then for a pig, it waves its trotter. Forgive me, I'm not, not too familiar with pigs, but basically um, it's going to be a different method for each class, but it has to be used inside of each class. It has to be used. So let's go inside of dog. And already we're going to see that we've got an error. And that is basically because um, it has to implement this abstract class that we've already defined. As you can see, this is the error that's come up. We've also got the problem of adding a constructor method which we'll do now, actually. So we can say public dog. And that also takes in a string of name. And inside of here, we're just going to, um, from the superclass, we're just going to add in that constructor method as well so it knows what we're talking about. OK, still got the error. Yeah, it's because we need to overwrite that abstract method. OK, so we're just going to make that public void wave at user and then inside of here we're just going to say system out print line in fact no this is bad practice we're going to make it a string it's going to return a string and it's just going to return um, a string of um, this at dog waves at you it's name is, and then we're just going to concatenate that with this dot name. Lovely. So if this was a private variable, as you'll see, 
dog doesn't have access to it. However, because it was a protected variable, dog does have access to it. So because we've made everything inside of our super and child class, now we're going to go straight into application and we're going to create public static void main. Okay. Now let's make an instance of an animal object. And for the perceptive ones of you out there, you might see what's coming. So animal animal is equal to new animal and we can call it Rex. Guess what? It is not going to accept that because you can instantiate animal. If we change it to dog, lovely stuff. We can instantiate it because it's not an abstract class. Just genius, isn't it? Okay, and a moment ago when I was talking about protect protected classes, here's what this does. So if I say animal.name is equal to Tony, I don't know why you call a dog Tony, but even so, we cannot access that name variable from outside of the child class of the package. So it's not going to let us do that. We would have to use a setter method. So we're doing well, um, but we've also imported this uh, java.util array list, and I think it's time to show you how that works. So let's just say we've got quite a few of these uh, dog objects. Okay, I'm actually just going to copy and paste it to save us all a little bit of time. Let's say we've got quite a few of them, right? We might want to put it into some sort of like nice place, uh, like maybe a list or something, if you see where I'm going. That's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to make a public static method inside of here. Um, and we can make it a void method, uh, because all we're going to do is we're just going to be printing out some information from inside this list. And we're just going to call it get all waves. Lovely. So we got this method now. Um, so inside of here, we're going to define an array list. And the way that we do this is we say array list, and then we put in the data type that we want to be putting into this array list. And that is, of course, animal. It's an animal data type. This means as well that we can also put dog objects in. If we had other children, such as cat and pig, we can put those inside of this array list as well, because they all extend from the animal data type. They're all animals. So yeah, we could, we could basically put different data types in as long as they're all of the same, like, as long as they all extend from the same place. Right. So we'll call this array list animal, animal list. Okay, is equal to new. So I'm allocating it space and memory. Uh, array list. And that's, that is the syntax for it. So we don't need to put this uh, data type in again. We just need to put the two angle brackets and two normal parentheses afterwards. Syntax for adding things into it. So there are two ways that we can do this. So let's just say we've got animal and animal2, and we've got Rex and Toby. I don't know why I want to call animals with the toe inside of them. The way that we add it into the list is we just say animal list dot add and then we just put in what we want animal and then if I duplicate this animal two we've put all both of these values inside of the array list however if we want to be even quicker we might just take this new dog variable here and put this inside saves us a few lines of code and it has the exact same effect because we're not going to be doing anything else with this dog value once we put it inside of the list we don't necessarily need it there okay so we can delete that and we're going to keep it like that so let's get the information from the list so the way we're going to do this is we're going to loop through it you could get it by index so the way that i'll show you the syntax for that quickly um let's just run get all waves okay so system out print line and inside of here we could just do animal list dot get and then it'd be an index of zero hopefully this will work and what it's going to return us is rex or the uh, dot what was it wave a user that's just going to return the first thing inside of this array the dog weighs at you, its name is Rex. So that's that's the syntax for that. As opposed to using square brackets and the index number, we use this get method and then we put the index inside of there. Um, however, what we want to get all of the information from it, the best way to do that is we're going to be using a for each loop. So we define it as the data type that's inside of this array list. We give it a name, 
for a variable, so animal, animal, a colon, and then we say what we want to loop through. So that's animal list, which is this variable that we've defined here. And inside of here, we don't really want to do an awful lot. We pretty much want to do what we did a second ago. So animal, animal is now an animal object. We've already casted it into an animal object by defining it here. So all we need to do is just say sound animal. This is going to give us where it is in memory and nothing else. So if we run it, as you can see, animals.dog, and it shows that. Cool. What class is it in? Dot get class. Wait, hold on. Oh, cool. It's showing us what class it is as well. This is the package. Don't worry about that too much, okay? But wait, what super class does it have? Get super class. And then run that. No way. They're animals. Amazing. We've also got access to the method that we created, which is where we're going to finish this video. Uh, wave at user. And if we run that, just lovely, we get both of our values returned. So that's just great, isn't it? Um, so in this video, just to quickly have a little rundown, because we've got a little bit of time, we have created our super class with an abs um, of abstract visibility of animal, which means we can instantiate it. Uh, we've got protected strings, which means that it can only be accessible from child classes. We already know about constructor methods, and we have this abstract method, which means that we have to use it in any class that extends animal. We have to redefine it. We have our child class, which we have overwritten the abstract method from the super class. And inside of here, we have created an array list. We've added two values to it of the data type animal. And then we've looped through it and we've got the wave it user return value from the animal class. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful in some way, shape or form. And uh, take it easy. Happy coding. See you soon.